Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning June 29th, 2020. If you would like a personal reading with me, just go to my website at angelsouls444.com and be aware these are not psychic readings. I'm not sitting in fourth dimensional energy looking at your 3D reality telling you the details of your life. You already know what your name is. You know the details of your life, right? So that's not what I do, right? We go into fifth dimensional energy and above. Uh, we'll dive into your soul's contract. If that's what you wanna do, we can reflect back what you've become numb to. This is the part that some people just don't like because they are used to going, paying for a reading and hearing what they wanna hear. Um, but we are here to actually attempt to help, okay? So there will be guidance, it will be deep, it will be what probably nobody else is gonna tell you, <laughs> right? Because they don't, you know, it's not like we wanna upset you, it's not that, but we don't want you to keep stumbling along, missing the point of your own life and maybe struggling needlessly, okay? So it's a little bit different. If that's not your cup of tea, I understand 100%. Um, you do whatever's right for you. But if that sounds like something that you would be interested in, Angel Souls 444. Dot com. If you would like to check out my library of courses, just head on over to gumroad.com. That information is in the description box along with Patreon support information. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. You make this possible. <laughs> you really do. All right. So for this week's message, uh, let's get into it. So we need to be making our spiritual practice a priority. Well, that's not revolutionary. We knew that. No, like for real, okay? <laughs> we need to be doing this. And there are some of us that are getting called out right now are bringing forward and wanting to bring awareness to the fact that some human beings are catching on to this whole spirituality thing or this whole new age movement for personal gain. It is not bad to want a house. It is not bad to want a car or a good relationship or a great career that you just feel really fulfilled. That's, that's not a problem. But some people only just hang out there and that's no longer acceptable. When we work on our own energy, there needs to be this um, intention behind it to heal humanity by offering the little bit that we can. By remembering our brothers and sisters who have not always been treated as humans. Can you just turn your face away and say, this stresses me out? No, you may not. Well, you can do whatever you want, but I'm being dramatic, so just follow me here, okay? <laughs> Going for a laugh. Did it work? I don't know. Um, but, you know, you, you can't just be thinking about yourself during these times. When we are working on our energy, it, like I said, it needs to be with the intention of, I want to contribute the bit of love that I can. I want to contribute whatever healing I can to my brothers and sisters who, as I said before, have not always been treated as human. There's a lot to be educated on out there, okay? Now, if you're an empath, you've felt that. There's never been a day where, um, you know, my brothers and sisters out there have not been a part of my prayers. Uh, there's not ever been a time where I've done a meditation and not, um, you know, worked on my own energy and did all that stuff, but then spread it out to my loved ones and to the world for whoever is ready to accept it. We cannot go against others' free will. So always, that's always on offer. So if you're ever having a dark moment, if you're ever having some, you know, dark night of the soul kind of thing going on, know that you always have me out here, okay? I'm always out here. I feel your heart and I'm sending you good energy, okay? Even, even if it's not exactly in our linear time frame, <laughs> right? At some point, uh, you know, you have been sent love. And you will continue to be sent love if you want to receive it. But it does become problematic um, when people know, like, okay, there's this whole collective. Like, if you're new to spirituality and you're not aware of all this, that's fine. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> like, we'll get to it. I have lots of videos here on YouTube if you want to check them out about, you know, spiritual things and what have you. Also, leave me some ideas for some new content that you would like to see. I've just been doing, like, the dailies and the weeklies, so... Um, I will not be doing the monthly. Every time I try to do a monthly for each sign, like 
not that many people view them and it's a lot of work. I think I've complained about that before. Sorry about it, but, <laughs> but it, you know, I'm not an astrologer, so I don't get the same kind of traffic to those videos that, you know, you know what I mean? Okay. So anyway, where were we? So it's not bad if you're new to this and you're like, well, I kind of came to spirituality because, you know, I want more flow in my life. I want to feel peaceful. I want to feel bliss. I want to feel harmony. I want to feel love. I want, you know, all those things. That's all well and good. Just all we're asking here is that you remember other people when you are meditating to remember other people when you are praying. Okay. Now, again, we have to do it very carefully. We have to do it for the highest good of everyone involved. So long as it does not interfere with their free will choices. So we cannot just throw our energy on someone else. Does that make sense? Okay. If that doesn't, let me know down below in the comments and, and we can have a discussion. I am trying to keep up with the comments again. I think I got a little behind this week. What have I been doing? I don't It's been busy. <laughs> I have to sit and like go through all of that. But, um, I, you know, I definitely try to at some point get in there and get to your comments. So when we talk about working on your energy, meditating when you first wake up in the morning, uh, make sure that at some point during the day you are doing a chakra alignment, okay? Lots of different ways of doing that. Going up to Father Sky, it depends on how you want to, <laughs> Central Sun, you know, whatever you believe. A cord going up there, you know, roots going into the earth. The energies come together here in the heart center. You know, again, you have your method. Everybody has their way of doing it. Just be careful if someone comes in and says, this is the right way to do it and the only way to do it. Uh, the other thing, the other pandemic that we need to talk about is narcissism. That's happening, okay? And they are going crazy right now. They can't take it. So pay attention to that. You figure out what's right for you for aligning your chakras. Give that a go every day. If you can do so safely, make sure that you are getting outside every day. If you cannot get outside for whatever reason, open a window, all right? You need the air, you need that grounding, okay? This is not a self-serving time. If you are a self-serving person, it, this is not gonna look good for you, okay? Like this is not, <laughs> this isn't your time because oh, we'll get to that in the coming weeks, but it's getting the, that, um, that layer, I guess, or whatever, it's becoming brittle and it's going to break. That's the, where, People just live in their third dimensional ego consciousness, stuck in self-preservation, perhaps from some trauma, right? Because, you know, like it snips the wiring, gets you in shutdown mode, and then feelings are too scary and too dangerous, so we never go there, right? But now we're coming into a time, now psychologists, I'm not a psychologist, but um, psychologists I understand say that narcissism can't be cured, We'll see about that. I don't know. I don't know anything, but we'll see about that. <laughs> like I said, we'll have to let it kind of unfold and, and see what comes of that. But, um, you know, if, if we can finally regain our hearts, we're not going to be so divided. We're not going to be uh, trying to punish people who are trying to stand up for other human beings, which is so weird to me. Um, you know, we're not going to take advantage of a situation, you know, being mindful of that and making sure that we are connecting in with one another. When we come into our heart space, some of those fearful reactions to things, it, it, it gets subdued and, and it, we remember who we are in the heart space. We remember that people are not our enemies. And yes, we're all in different stages of healing and, you know, making this turn of sorts. We're all kind of doing it at our own pace and that's all well and good. Um, but try to, you know, there, there is this message here of try to give people the benefit of the doubt, but balancing that with boundaries. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everyone's got to set those boundaries. We can't just let people who are in that fearful state, uh, who will do anything to just preserve themselves and get what they want to take advantage of us, to take our energy, so on and so forth. So make sure that this, try to treat it like a spa vacation for you, okay? So if you have your regular nine to five job, if you have kids, maybe give yourself 15 minutes in the morning if you can. Wake up, you know, meditate for a few minutes, maybe do quick yoga, like five minutes of yoga or whatever you wanna do, but make sure you're starting your day like that and make sure you're giving yourself time at some point to amp up 
your energy. We need to become more aware of the field of energy that is around each of us as individuals. What kind of messaging, what kind of signal are we putting out from our bodies? Now, the other thing that we want to get out of here is this whole judgmental thing, right? <laughs> now, um, as I've expressed before, like I've never fit into the spiritual community because everybody has this like set idea of what it should be. So if you are somebody who is a truth speaker, for example, we're the reflectors. We're the ones that are supposed to kind of get you to see things that you're too uncomfortable to see, but that doesn't come without a lot of punishment. If you are somebody, <laughs> it makes me laugh, but you know, like, cause I've been through it for so many years. I'm just like, I can't, I just, you just gotta laugh. I don't know. Um, but you know, when people try to take you and they don't understand what your path is, they don't understand what kind of empath you are uh, and they want to shove you over here and manipulate you watch the people that are leading those kinds of arguments because they're the narcissists they're the ones that infiltrate and they don't have the purest intentions they're the ones that as soon as there are difficult conversations about humanity going on they're going oh my god this is stressing me out i don't want to do this you know and they're not helping it's their way of the highway how many of you out there are reflector empaths? How often do you get beat up by other people because they, they think that what you're doing is wrong or you shouldn't, if you're spiritual, then you should be my idea of what spiritual is, which means you just make me feel nice all the time. If that were the case, okay, then nobody would ever grow, okay? Like nobody would ever get better. Nobody would ever learn. We wouldn't keep it moving, right? So <laughs> like, everybody has their way. Now, maybe you're an empath and you're kind of like, well, Michelle, I'm one of those empaths that I am a peacekeeper. And so it is sort of my response to go, okay, well, Let's, let's just, everybody stay calm. Everybody be in a good energy. That's beautiful too. There's nothing wrong with that, right? I mean, there are plenty of empaths that go the other way. But what I'm talking about here, just in these two examples, is as we proceed here and as things start to kind of open up, however you want to see this, portals opening. <laughs> we just talk about portals. There are portals open all, all the time, okay? Like, please, there's got to be something going on here, right? <laughs> but like, as we go into this next week and things start to kind of move and shake, we as the empath family need to start having more appreciation of one another and not judging one another. Now, am I guilty of this? I realized, yes, man. I would look at some of those other like peacekeeper ones. I'm like, you don't even do anything, <sighs> you know, or feeling like they were judging me because Wow, like I'm a stellium Scorpio, so I guess I'm intense. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> like, and sometimes people who are just kind of wired differently, that feels threatening. That might trigger something in this human story that they've encountered before, you know. Um, and then conversely, like I get a little triggered by people who, you know, I, I don't feel supported all the time because I'm out there, you know, saying something that's kind of tough, but I feel like it needs to be said and I feel like everyone just kind of abandons me, right? And I'm just kind of sitting there like, all right, well, <laughs> thanks for nothing, right? So we are kind of coming together now and trying to understand, or we have the opportunity now to open up and start seeing that and trying to support one another and, uh, you know, being on the same team. We are on the same team. We can't have division in everything. I mean, my goodness, right? So there's that. So you just kind of recap here. What we're doing here is making sure that we're really making our uh, force field a priority, right? Um, being aware of the kind of energy that we have around us. Now, some of you are listening to this video and your mind just went to, oh yeah, that means I have to get rid of those people that surround me because it's everybody else's fault that I feel negative. If it wasn't for everybody else, I would be okay. Okay, so this is a lesson we all have to learn as well. Again, we're all coming out of that self-preservation mode. If you're listening to this video and that's where your mind went, it's not everybody else, it's you. Unsubscribe, unsubscribe, unsubscribe. Oh, I can't hear it, I know, I know, I know. I don't wanna tell you this is life. Okay. So what I mean by that 
if you're still here, is that we have to stop throwing our energy. I say this in personal readings all the time. We have to stop throwing our energy outside of us because we're too afraid to look at what's inside. Guess how I'm able to sit here and say that to you? Because I've done it, okay? I've done it. I've blamed my job. I've blamed, you know, my my past, you know, the things that have happened in the past and traumas from the past and that's why and blah. And if it wasn't for everybody else, blah, 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 and I'm probably still going to do it here and there, but I will try to be more aware and try to catch myself, okay? <laughs> and then to have that opportunity in the awareness to make a shift. And can I go from ego consciousness that's going, you got to preserve yourself, you got to help yourself, you got to be first, you got to get ahead. Have you seen those people out there? The ones that like run in front of you just because they got to be first on the sidewalk? And come into the heart, <laughs> right? Where there is love and compassion and you know, now we're making a little room for one another. Yes. So there's so much going on. Every week we can make like an hour long video about what's coming up. But get your energy in a good place. Make yourself a priority. Okay. But make sure that you go into your meditation and your prayers with the intention of including others. All right. And um, be careful of how you pray too. Because if you're praying and going, oh, please stop all the blah. Well, who are you to say, stop all that? What if all that is serving a purpose? What if all that is how someone else is growing? So if we pray in a different way, if we say, thank you, God, source, creator of the universe, thank you for protecting anybody who's willing to accept protection. Thank you for giving love to everybody out there who is willing to accept it. Thank you for sending my love out to everybody who is willing to accept it. Thank you for helping me have realizations that will help me be a better person. And that goes across the board, guys. All right, so anybody that you just thought of as your enemy, remember, <laughs> they think of you as an enemy too. So everyone has this to do, yes? So more unity in our own community and stopping this whole thing of giving into the narcissist, right? Um, again, I'm not trying to like throw my energy out and say it's their fault, but I think we need to be aware that that is happening around us. A lot of us have been sort of sucked in by people who are trying to, you know, being a leader is not the same thing as, you know, <laughs> trying to feed off of people, right? A good leader doesn't do that. So that awareness, breaking through those patterns, waking up, not blaming everybody else, taking charge of your own life, remembering others. All right. So let me get onto the cards. If anything else comes up around that, I'll bring it up. We got like a nasty storm coming in. <laughs> oh, I feel like there's always something. There's always like weather and I love it. Okay. That's why I live here. You ought to see the lightning storms we get. Nikola Tesla came here to do his work for good reason. <laughs> That's really cool. All right. So let's get some cards. Again, don't forget to leave some suggestions in the comments about uh, types of co uh, content that you would like to see. All right. Okay, so sorry, we got there was another message here. So there will be more people getting crazy. Remember, this is not really a battle in the way that we think it is. This is who is in their heart and who's trying to control everybody? And each example from each of those uh, kind of dynamics is there in, in every facet of humanity, right? So you always have people who are trying to harm others. You have people who are coming from hate. And then you have the people who want to engage in love, okay? So that's really what we're discovering here. We'll have to like touch base next week maybe and see, or we can touch base in the comments about how that's playing out. Because I'd be interested to know what, what exactly is going to go down there? Let's do it. What do we got? Ooh, pink tourmaline forgiveness. Now, this is that whole thing where people, when you, if you're going to get stuck and go, no, I can't forgive. I'm not doing it. It doesn't mean that what somebody did was right. But if you're hanging on to it, that's going to hold you up. And guess what? It holds up the entire collective. So you owe it to yourself and you owe it to all your brothers and sisters who love you. 
and that's you know maybe somebody that you've never met on the other side of the planet when we send out our love it's so that we can all feel okay we can all remember that there was an original self before the human story got started there was an original self that was innocent it's still there but it gets buried under a story it gets buried under moments and events and things that terrify us stories that we believe stories that get uh, sort of imprinted on us by others right it's not everyone else's fault I'm just saying like there are influences we all influence one another okay so if we can forgive there will be a chance of release no, that's not the card. Okay, hold on. <laughs> All right, next card up is Clear Quartz Purification. So again, there's this whole idea here where we get ourselves so wound up in what we think should be. We get upset. We get afraid. We think, oh, I failed. Oh, please, please, please. Beautiful, beautiful people out there. When you, oh man, I could go off on a tirade on this one. When you are out there seeing yourself as someone who needs to be fixed and then you're pushing on the solution, or what you think is the solution. You're missing the magic of who you are. So anytime, and again, here you go, it's like a narrative. If a narrative that's going around like a cold, right, says that you shouldn't look the way that you do, you shouldn't be who you are, um, there's something wrong with you, or blah, you know, whatever, pick something, I mean, you can insert anything here. We wanna purify that away. There is nothing about you that needs to be fixed. Yeah, but Michelle, I, I do need to get fixed. I'm experiencing this mental disorder. Or I'm experiencing this health issue. Or I'm experiencing a bad job or a bad relationship or whatever. You know, like something like that. I'm experiencing a, an identity crisis. You are perfect and magical just as you are. Your soul is so stinking intelligent, okay? <laughs> it helped you get set up to experience the things that you're going through right now because it's teaching you something. What is the lesson? What can you take away from that? If you look at anything from your past that maybe you don't like, if you really got into the heart and you looked at it for a minute, you'd realize, wow, that was one of the best things that's ever happened to me. If you think of a really bad relationship and someone broke your heart, what did you learn from that? I know I had a bad relationship and it ended poorly and um, it was an awful experience. But when I look back and I see the whole story around that, I'm like, well, that's how I got my independence. That's where I took that turn. That's where I started to find myself. That's where I realized what love really is. That's when I realized to start having higher standards <laughs> right? and not allowing myself to get pulled into someone else's story. To stand on my own two feet, to be me unapologetically, unapologetically. I would like as a purifying exercise, whoever's watching this, whatever you're experiencing in life, can you put in the comments, I accept me as I am. I am pure. And I'm living the best human existence that I can right now, right? <laughs> because again, on a soul level, you put whatever you want in the comments, you don't have to quote that. But like, you know, when we're talking about purification, purify yourself of this pressure to look exactly like someone else. I am five foot two and chubby, okay? I, you, you think like some, by some, like force is going to stretch me out and I'm going to be what is typically thought of as a supermodel. You think that's going to happen? I'm suddenly going to be 30 again. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Got all these good oils out there and <laughs> research about telomeres could happen. Okay. But, like, but purify, take yourself into a loving place of the self. Whatever condition your body is in right now, it is amazing because it is housing your soul. There are so many things that have to fire off in that physical body to animate you, to help you get around in those events that you keep wishing didn't happen, but really taught you something. So can this be a topsy-turvy week? Of course, hi, you know, that's what we've been doing. <laughs> right? 
when have we ever had like, hey, nothing's happening this week. It's just going to be great. You know what I'm saying? So have some self-love there. Have some, purify all the, the self, the negative self-talk and all the uh, stress about how someone's going to get upset because you set a boundary. You're allowed to set boundaries. You're supposed to set boundaries. It's one of the things many of us would be here to learn, <laughs> right? So the next card we have here is Petrified Wood Ancestors. Hang on. Look at this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this without reflection. But anyway, so just as a reminder, quick reminder, we had the purification, forgiveness. And now we have ancestors. Hang on. This is asking you, all of us, to start healing and forgiving the patterns that have passed on to us. Now, I know some of you see this and you're like, no, that means the wisdom of the ancestors. Sure. Uh, take some of the, you know, make sure you take the good stuff, right? <laughs> Whatever they have to teach us. And it is about the past. It's about not repeating the past. That's very important too. So make sure we're not repe uh, repeating the past. But this is definitely, listen, this is hatred getting passed down. This is ideology that we know was nonsense when it was first put out, but darned if we don't keep hanging on to it. I don't know. Are we going to have like a week where we're like, we just realize everything we've been taught is kind of dumb. Okay. Like, like, why do we see each other as the enemy? What story have we been lulled into? We have the power to say no to that. If it's a toxic story, well, there's tons of toxic stories that have happened with humanity, right? Who we're allowed to love and not love. Who is our enemy? Who's not our enemy? You can't be who you want to be. I don't care if it feels authentic to you. It makes me uncomfortable, so don't, right? Like, we, we don't need to give in to that anymore. We don't have to give in to hatred. Do you hear me? We don't have to give in to that anymore. We keep doing it though, because we think we have to. We're on autopilot. Let's break that. Let's do that. Let's do that collectively and vow to leave the hatred behind and to create something new with one another, okay? All right, the next card we have, look at this, Tiger's Eye courage. What we're doing here takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage to stand up to the past, to people that we love and adore, but dang the stuff that comes out of your mouth. Like what is, why are you, what, huh? Like, <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? It, it, it takes courage to express your opinion, but there's something else about this. You know, Tiger's Eye is very grounding. So is Petrified Wood. Um, but, but this is, protection, very, very protective. I want to put that out there too. Um, but it takes courage to stand up to someone and say, I will not accept that as a truth anymore. I will not accept that I have no power. Okay. Now let me give you a very generic example here. How many times have you been up against a business that is doing shady stuff? Okay. And you know, they're doing shady stuff. You kind of fell victim to it and you try to speak up and man, they just squash you or they squash what you have to say. Um, and I'm not, listen, that's not the same category as someone who's just, um, they've got evil swirling in them and they just want to harm everybody. And so then they're going after companies constantly. That's not exactly what we're talking about here. What I'm getting at here is like shady dealings, right? And you try to set a boundary and you get knocked down. You know, it does take courage to not only stand up against that, but to then stand up to people who say, oh my God, you're so petty. Oh my God, let it go. Oh my God, that bothers you. It takes a lot of courage to break away from something that we know isn't working, that never has worked, that's needed to be changed for quite some time because people don't usually like change. And so even if we become okay with that change, others are going to kick and scream and even maybe try to pull us back in, try to accuse us of not being good people because you don't agree with me. You're now my enemy, right? Notice how really weird and discom uh, 
discomfort. <laughs> I was going to say discomforting. Notice how weird it starts to feel when the more and more we get divided, how unnatural that feels, right? So what we're witnessing right now, the more and more people get divided, you can see their discomfort. You can see it because they're like, all of a sudden they're just, you know, grappling for the old response and it sounds stupid. And it sounded stupid in the past, but it sounds even weirder now, right? Because, you know, it's like, we all know this doesn't fit. We all know that there's change coming. What are we doing? Why are we hanging on to this old thing, right? So have the courage to move on. But first you have to have the courage to face yourself and to face what actually scares you. To process that, come into your heart and try to make different choices, okay? You're not going to get it right. Do not be perfectionistic about this because it's not going to work, <laughs> right? <laughs> because that's what we're all doing here. But I think, you know, you know, wherever we are with trying to figure out what's the right thing to do, what's the next right move, how can I help, um, what can I do? I find that love is always effective. I find that love is always very, very effective. Um, and reminding people that you don't have to give in to the surface level story. You're beautiful as you are. You're lovable as you are. And the only people who don't agree with that are people who are incapable of feeling love because they think that it's a club that they don't belong to. All right? I always hesitate to say anything because maybe that's not picking up on the mic. That's, that's some wind. Maybe today's the tornado day. No, I don't, I don't want anybody getting hurt. All right. Let's get our card for this week. Our card is mm, <laughs> gold attract abundance. The number is 21, reduces to three. That is mastery. All right. That is self mastery. But look at this. This is the energy we want to get into. We are struggling because we're giving into a story. We end up hating one another, mostly because we hate ourselves. Because we were taught that you're not smart enough, you're not wanted, you know, there's just so many things. You're not beautiful. And in this world, if you're not beautiful, then you're nothing. We can be free of that story anytime we want. And there's going to be healing that needs to happen. And really, uh, I feel like this card, this attract abundance is saying, you know, don't try not to see everything right now, even with as messy as things are, as much as we're cracking open, it's like bones breaking so that we can be reset and heal properly. Try not to see that as the most awful. I know it's unpleasant for the way it's happening, but um, it's leading us somewhere. It's teaching us something. It's giving us something that is the absolute true abundance. And that is finding each other again, coming together again, reminding ourselves that we're allowed to love each other, even if we never meet. All right. So we're going to leave it there, guys. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.